Sarcastically Explained, Ruby, Volume 7. Hold up, before we start, I think my avatar needs a beard. Ah, there we go. Okay, Ruby, Volume 7 is the successor to Ruby, Volume 6. I'm not sure how many more years I'm going to have to keep doing this gag. We pick up right where we left off, after Karen tried to stop the kids, but sent them along anyway. Hey, no, 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 I can hear you typing. It's okay, I can say that word. Some of my best friends are Karens. Now, if I had to summarize this volume, I'd have to say this is the volume of Psych. Like, for instance, we think Ironwood's doing good. Psych! He's tired of shit and is definitely in violation of Elysian military dress code. We think Winter can be trusted. Psych! She's a dog of the military. We think Penny's dead. Psych! Robots can't die! We're altered carbon now! Penny's DHF backup is intact and her last stack wasn't ruined. It's cool. And speaking of Altered Carbon, welcome to the dystopian kingdom of Atlas, with a filthy high-tech cyberpunk city underneath, and a shiny Arium on top of it. Ironwood's gone all crazy and basically initiated martial law, but he hasn't. Because, you know, troops and surveillance equipment patrolling the streets is definitely not reminiscent of martial law at all. How far do you intend to go, General? Well, just watch me. So, Team Com Ruby Jr. decided to ditch the ship and lay low, because, you know, laying low involves being the most colorful-looking people in an entire city block. And breaking government sh**. And meeting one of the most prominent Atlesians. And breaking cover before totally making sure that the city that would likely deal with grim attacks on the regular isn't equipped to do that whatsoever. They do some cool fighting and then Penny shows up. Ruby's reaction is a little more muted than I thought it would be, but... I guess after you've seen people die in real life, uh, not much really phases you anymore. Oof. Then they are arrested by the special forces for... Illegal weapons. I guess this is a good time to introduce the Aesops to you in no particular order. The heteroflexible fishermen, Nora Senpai, Ren Senpai, Officer Judy Hopps, and the good boy. No, but seriously, Mero is a good boy. Look at this tail wag! Now you think they've seriously screwed the pooch, right? Psych! Everything's cool and Ironwood has a plan, so they can trust him. Right? Psych again! Ruby's now keeping secrets too! Um, how do you feel about that, Ozpin puppet? Oh, you little hypocrite! Not so easy now, is it? Now imagine me doing that for hundreds and thousands of years! Bloody fandom giving the innocent Ruby Rose a pass, but when old Ozpin does it, it's the worst thing in the world! I should just be a simp for Salem again and let all of you be subjugated. Ingrates. Thanks, Ozpin Puppet. The kids then join forces with Atlas and work on some random side quests while Ironwood gets his giant 5G tower working and safe from vandalism. And Karen. Oh, and they also got new outfits, which are honestly kinda hit and miss, but don't let this distract you from the fact that my boy Jean is getting roasted alive for this fuckboy haircut. How could this happen to me? Which I honestly didn't think was that bad, but the show then ironically plays this off as being good because no one could have honestly predicted this reception. Now this seems simple, right? Just do side quests, get the tower going, and then tell Ironwood the truth. Nope! Enter Scorpion Boy and Mustache Man. By the way, if you remember this Ruby Thoughts clip from 2018... Too much energy fighting. <sighs> Oscar, there isn't much time. Get the Relic Atlas. Ironwood will take care of all the rest. If I'm not there. But beware the Mustached Man. Mustache man. Oz, what are you talking about? Oz? Oz! Yeah, I called it. Oh yeah, and because it works on two different levels, I'm not done yet. Evil Colonel Sanders and Riven are here to shake things up politically. What is broken can be reforged. Evil Colonel Sanders wants to reopen the businesses too early, which may risk a lot of people getting hurt. Wait. Wait, what did that feel too real? Oof. And Riven wants to rebuild the wall and make Atlas pay for it, which, by the way, how cheap is Jimmy? Oh hey guys, I'm General Ironwood. We can't afford to rebuild the wall and deal with Grim Attacks. Also Jimmy. We can't afford these robots to protect you from the Grim Attacks. By the way, they don't actually work properly. And that is all the threats this volume. Alright, we've got a lot of plot to get through, so let's go. An election happens. Riven looks like she's about to win. Renora happens. Like, for real. Riven holds a premature victory rally, and oh my god, that blew up the moon and left this world. Protect. This. Waifu. Everything looks good, but then the mustache man shows up and hacks the shit out of an election. While Scorpion Moy hacks and slashes the shit out of this crowd. Penny's framed, which everyone accepts very quickly for some reason. Riven's angry. Evil Colonel Sanders wins and basically says, let's make Atlas great again. 
and then a riot happens. But don't sweat it, Detective Weiss is on the case. Oh, and uh, Pietro committed the taboo of human alchemy, but I think Penny won in the appearance contest. Sorry, Alphonse. Everyone is cordially invited to a dinner with this invite that doesn't seem to say anything. I know cursive, so don't come at me and say, oh, this is just all fancy writing. Like, seriously, what the fuck? It would have taken like 10 seconds for someone to actually write out that invite. I'm really sorry if I sound a little annoyed, but when close-up asses aren't given the attention that they need, and white shot asses are given all the attention they don't need, it just bothers me a little. Also, the victory party is a council meeting, conveniently out of sight of the general public or any non-biased oversight or the press. Okay, okay, hold yourself back. If you start drilling into why the government of Atlas is set up all stupid, you'll never finish. But if you want to see me do that, leave it down in the comment below. Detective Weiss solves electoral fraud and high treason all in one night, thanks to Mama Schnee. See this waitress? Keep an eye on her, she's important. Oh, and by the way, the heating grid was shut off and now there are more riots. Jock pulled a boomer move and gave Watts his username and password and there's no reset system or two-factor authentication required. Which segues perfectly into our sponsor, Flashpath, the all-in-one VPN and password manager service. Are you too busy running your dust monopoly to worry about cybersecurity and managing a bunch of passwords? Flashpath's got you covered! I'm just kidding, by the way, we don't actually get sponsors. Everyone decides to work together and Ardwood tells everyone about Salem. And they take it surprisingly well. Jock gets arrested, Willow exhales, Whitley gets a little sad and life goes on in the Schnee household. Oh, remember how he said that that was all the threats for this volume? Psych! You thought your biggest threat was what? But it was I, Neo! Neo and Cinder have been hiding here for a while and are poised to take the lamp. And this is the phase of the story where everything goes to shit and happens really fast. You ready? Oscar tells the general that Salem can't be killed, Ironwood takes it well for now. Ruby and the Aesops evac as many villains as he can. Two birds and a leprechaun take down a mecha scorpion. Ironwood and Robin tell everyone about Salem. Ironwood defeats Watts. Cinder spooks Ironwood. Winter's about to become the Winter Maiden. Psych! Here's Cinder! Team Ruby and Ironwood argue. Salem shows up. Ruby tries a protagonist speech. It's not very effective. Salem ends his girl's whole career. What career? Ruby starts a civil war. Oscar's missing. Oh wait, here he is. Psych, that's Neo. And she's fulfilling our punch the farm boy once per volume quota. Neo steals a relic. Ruby beats up the Aesops. Tyrion gets loose. Clover dies, which is definitely not controversial at all. But no, seriously, this topic isn't mine to talk about. There are many more write-ups and opinions that handle this topic with the seriousness it deserves. And I'll link a few of them in the description below. Penny gets the power, Cinder gets beaten again. Seriously, why is she still a villain? Ironwood shoots a small child, Oscar unlocks the Ozatar state, Ozpin's back just in time to see his ex-wife, Atlas is probably fucked to leave on this cliffhanger, and Ruby Volume 7 is probably one of the better volumes. And that was Ruby Volume 7, sarcastically explained. If you have something that you would like me to sarcastically explain next, please do leave it down in the form of a suggestion in the comments down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to our notifications, and check out our merch. Thanks for watching.